So TNT in blue at the bottom, DR Stitch in red at the top. What are we going to see here? Well, we'll see. What TNT played yesterday was based on lots, lots of graveyard actually with Poison. And he's the one banning graveyard tonight, so we'll have to see. We do see the Prince. Does this indicate a giant is going to be dropped down right at that bridge? No. Okay, Fireball comes in. That will severely damage the Electro as it takes out the Rascal Girl. So that Prince is going to be able to at least look at that Magic Archer, but n get nowhere near. Yeah, but TNT only used uh, two cards so far. There's Dark Prince as well. And this smells more and more like the usual Golem we see for 2v2. But it's going to be a very heavy one if actually TNT was willing to use that. He is the kind of player who, I mean, double print giant is probably more likely. That's yeah. going back a while, though. There's been quite a few balance changes since then. But TNT, for, there we go. There's the giant. From what I've heard, he likes to play meta decks. Oh, oh man, but there's the P.E.K.K.A. right after. So that giant will be very weak in this game. So let's see if that giant comes out anymore, because I think it's basically not going to be too far for him. Even with the P.E.K.K.A., the Giant still gets the value of just being a meat shield. Um, that's what you kind of want him to do at this point. You want him to just tank up and let your Princes do all the damage, but P.E.K.K.A. does take him out very, very, very quickly. And we see the Magic Archer just doesn't have the angle there. That now lock actually pushed him into yeah, an angle Just for that. one shot, but he will get more out of this tower straight on. There's a fireball, but he's very low on the elixir, as you can tell. That's why TNT plays bridge spam the Prince. There's not too many of a two. He just has to put something down. Yeah, the Royal Ghost does get down, but the actually Prince connects actually connects. To the tower. 3 d 3 Poking right through the Ghost. Doesn't even care. Just understanding the opponent's elixir, that he has a massive lead. It's quite rare to see that Prince is spammed in the bridge alone. Oh, and TNT throwing out the good games already. I mean, I have to agree, within 30 seconds left, T uh, Dio Stitch has all the work to do. And he's got all the hogs to take care of with that Dark Prince on the left. Still four digits. Yeah, with that lock, that puts it into fireball range on that tower. So all TNT has to do is hold on for his cycle. And he's been holding it for a long time. And there's the fireball. You're the first crown, and that's going to be a win for TNT. He's having some massive lead, and making sure that he has a perfect defense, even though the Giant was kind of countered by the P.E.K.K.A. It seemed like that was not really... Has TNT shaken off the first match blues? Will he be able to take this against Dia Stitch? Who... Dia Stitch has not played that many 1v1s at all. Yeah, Actually, close to none except any. for yeah, close to none except for the King of the Hill game, which is of course one v one, but not an actual one v one by himself, but best of three. Yeah, and that's that's a very different ball game. Uh, the best of three, we see a lot of players who are really good at King of the Hill, but in a best of three, they just get beaten because there's a lot more strategy between behind your decks, right? Yes, the mind games is real. Just having a single game. <laughs> <laughs> this game having a single game for King of the Hill, but it's just not the same format for the players to play. Seems like both players has has brought a different deck into the second game. See this Spirit Goblins already. Well, it could be what? anything. I mean, Mega Minion is in like a lot of decks. Spear Goblin and Zapper in a lot of decks. I mean, we can't really call, but oh, <laughs> Dia Stitch has an idea. I, I know, think with he that, knows. With that Zap, he's got an idea. He knows what this deck is. Mm -hmm. That's clearly what that meant, right? Or does it mean <laughs> that TNT has woken up the inner beast from Dia Stitch by that Zap? Maybe TNT, yeah, maybe he's poked a bit too much with these emotes and Dia Stitch is angry. Oh, TNT did 56 more damage. And he's certainly winning until now. <laughs> until anything's dropped, we're looking for that double elixir mark. Did he bring that s something heavy of a push once again, the giant? Giant would be good in this situation. Golem sometimes is a little too slow. 
Especially when we have a base trade, base race. But the bats here and the night, which obviously that means it's golem go time. But there is the giant, the lumberjack behind. Bats as well. Prince on the defense, choosing to defend here is very interesting because usually we just see all ins at this point. And it looks as though TNT has the advantage after round one of these engagements. Lately, Golem placed all the way on the back when the Giant is actually placed Beautiful onto the bridge. Tornado, though. So that's going to delay a little bit, but the Golem is not going to be not going to have the perfect pair. Nightwitch already on the left. Yeah, but that Fireball did so much work. And a Tesla, that is not good so, news. So Sparky all the way into the oh, Golem. Sparky. Trying to lead it, but it's going to get to the tower. Sparky has a 100% win ratio in Clash Royale League Asia. Will it continue now? We're going to see. So that will be the deleted Golem. And it doesn't really matter. The Baby Dragon is in range of the Princess. Lumberjack gets one hit, and now we see the Giant and the Sparky, the Bat Summon in the back. Look at the damage done there. Will the Mega Minion be able to finish it before he reloads? No, it hits the Night Witch and the Giant now. No going to hit. town on the tower. And wow! going to be the game. Tornado pulls, but he still had the Fireball and he... Here we are, TNT going up against Bat Strong. That's going to be his debut opponent, so... It doesn't really get interesting. much harder than that, does really? it, really? I mean, you're literally going up against the final boss uh, for your first match of CRL, but you know, being TNT, you are expected to put in a good performance and maybe just win out against TNT. Oh, <laughs> look at that! With the Hulk emails that has recently, recently come out. And look very good doing so. Yeah, you you uh, you spent some time with TNT before this week, right? And uh, all right, fine. Play the, uh, the Barbarian Barrel. That's fine. I mean, it's a new thing. It's just something that has been really been uh, trending in the recent ranked tournaments and. Especially in Grand Challenge, it does work pretty well with the two Elixir Claws. And it has changed from three very recently, but does less damage and it has uh, overall less effective use in terms of range has been changed as well. But altogether, uh, that Barbarian Burial is a niche pick for a lot of these players out there. Yeah, so as I was saying, you spent time with TNT. What do you think of him generally from what you've seen? He's a quiet guy. He's a, just a general out, just outgoing guy, but no, he, he really does save his words when the, uh, when he really needs to, and it feels like he's just really all about him. It's about playing Clash Royale, and you know this guy is gonna have a good time doing so, and really wants to beat everybody. I don't think he has in his mind that he's gonna lose. He just really wants to win as one of the prominent players that we've seen from this country so far. Yeah, he throws down that graveyard. The poison does come out from Master Hong to help defend there. Oh no, wait, that was his aggressive. Poison? Yeah, that was an offensive poison. That was an offensive poison. So Master Hong didn't choose to use the poison there. Does take quite a bit of damage, <laughs> but still has a slight lead here. Look at that Barbaro just getting one more second onto that Infernal Dragon, getting the charge on it. This is what happens with the Barbaro. That looks like a weird pick altogether, but still is going to get the job. And look at that defense with the Ice Wizard doing very, very well as well. Yeah, Ice Wizard is a very, very popular card when you get to the higher levels of the game. It just does so much for the player that uses it. And we see now the Mega Minion, the Valkyrie, with quite a few uh, little skeletons behind her. The Fire Spirits will take care of it. Okay, the Barbarian will come back once again. The Barbarian is here with the Graveyard now. And we're going to see what this can do with the Skeleton being summoned now. The Aggressive Poison offensively will add on to this damage now. And Will's going to be down to about 957 in the end. So a pretty good trade for TNT for now. That was absolutely beautiful. I don't know if you realize that he plays the Bar Barrel. The Graveyard comes shortly after. Yeah, the tower locks onto the Barbarian, buying a little bit more time. Perfectly timed play there by TNT. Drops down this Graveyard and a Poison again. We don't see the defensive Poison. No, there is a defensive Poison. No, that's an offensive Poison. It offensive? Yeah, it is offensive and still going to look towards 272. Uh, down on the tower now and not going to use the Bar Barrel this time around. And now we're going to see another offensive poison from uh, HQ and Master Hong. And still moving on here with the Barbarian. And he's going to be charging on with another series of attacking force here. And it's going to be Just the poison. A couple that's of it. hits. That's it. That's all I, I think gonna that's going to be it. Yeah, that's going to be it. Good enough. And 30 uh, HP is going to be very much taken care of. And TNT making his debut with a win. Going to be feeling pretty good after that one. And here we are. Yeah, off to the, the Hog emotes. Gonna get the Goblin emails from TNT and uh, starting strong and well played. Compliment being given 
uh, by Master Ong towards TNT and just going to store some time as we move on here, as you do kind of point out to me, 1983 born. Man, that, that, that is an old age for a, for a professional gamer. That, how old is that? I, I can't even calculate that far here. It's going to be a eight years older than I am, so technically though, that's going to be 34, I believe, if he has to pass his birthday. That I'm is, just sitting here like impressive. laughing at your caster math, like he's 35. He's 34. Five, it's 2018, 83. What's eight minus three? Okay, I'm I'm, tw yeah, all right, I'm, I'm, 20, I'm, I'm 27 and I'm 1991, <laughs> so 1983. You add eight to that and maybe 35. You're right. <laughs> Here we go. There TNT go. has bought the Golem Night Witch deck. We see the Baby Dragon there. Nothing too interesting about that deck. We see it a lot. But Master Hong bringing Royal Ghost Baby Dragon. He has a, he has a Golem over there. Yeah, he has there, a Golem. There has to be a Golem in this yeah, deck. It, it could be a, be a giant. So we're going to see the Princess Tower taking care of most of the thing except that little two bats. They're doing so much damage onto the tower. You saw the little zap a little bit from earlier uh, from Master Hall on the defense just to make sure the golem doesn't explode onto the tower. And we're going to see the tower uh, opening here uh, with the King Tower being activated with the tornado. So it's starting us up once again. The golem will be now charging from Master Hall. We'll see what TNT can do on defense now. Yeah, it does drop his Night Witch at the back, which means we're probably going to see Golem at the bridge. So it's going to be two Golems pushing against each other, starting their own mini. Ooh. Puts it a bit further back, allowing the buying time. Just yeah. buying time. That's literally all he's doing. And as told me before, he has to be very aggressive with these positioning. And we're going to see uh, this log just not allowing the Golem to explode right at the tower, which is going to be a crucial amount of couple hundred damage that will come through if left alone, sir. But look at that damage. Look at the defense from Master Hulk. Ah, perfect. Hump. Didn't take anything. Got a couple of hundred damage on his opponent's tower. That is how you have to play a Golem deck. Sure, tower HP is just another resource for Golem players. But when you're playing Golem versus Golem, that actually matters. You cannot afford to lose a tower. So Lumberjack on the defense for TNT. Poison as well needs to stop this before it gets to the tower. Yeah. Any damage here is going to be brutal. The baby dragon raged up. One, two explosions, maybe one baby golem I push, but this royal giant, royal ghost gets to the night witch. Master Hong throws down that poison to essentially block her out for a little bit. The mega minion will get taken out. Oh, by the tower. switching sides now. This is going to be very, very aggressive. If this does not work out, that's going to be in coming in. So he has to have a very minimal defense on the right side to defend against it because all in through, if this doesn't work out, that's going to be the end for TNT. But it seems like that's what we're going to get in here. The tornado just to buy a little bit of time, but that will not be enough. The Zap just to finish things off, and Matt Strong back in the game now. Game to victory is. A Golem and a Lumberjack alone will only take a tower quicker. For next, uh, we found TNT as the winner, but Matt Strong with the Mirror Deck space essentially going all the way through. He became the winner of that game two. Now we're going to game three. Kind of wondering uh, what cards we will see from the two players now. Yeah, both players seem to be waiting. Will TNT have the patience to wait this out? Says good luck and that's strong. No response so far. Pretty getting cool in, player that he is. Getting into his head. Hey, you know what? This is the mind games that the players get to play before cards start getting thrown down. A lock here, most likely just to cycle. And Master Hong starts us off with the first card. A lot of tombstone. Seeing the tombstone and just extending the time. But it's going to be another golem by Master Hong. Doesn't really opt to just wait this out and still is going to be standing things through. And it's going to see another tombstone on the end. And we're still wondering if that's going to be another golem by TNT. Or we're going to see the Lava Loom be played here. But the Valkyrie is here in time. Kind of further telling us that it might be a Lava Loom for TNT. Yeah, it does feel more... It doesn't feel like a golem deck at this point, especially with that Ice Wizard there. But we have this golem push coming in. Oh, beautiful lock taking everything out, and the golem is gonna. Oh, good tornado. tornado. That's a really good tornado. It's gonna get the Night Witch down. The Mega Minion will go down. The distraction once again coming in for the Tombstone end. Uh, this Mega Minion will go down, and the explosion of the golem happens in time. Right outside the tower. This Mini Pega just trying to be cheeky and just right charge into this tower, but it's not gonna get there in time. Gonna get the log away. You can see the Mini Pekka, it does not destroy this Valkyrie, but this Baby Dragon at full health. Continue to really make it a nuisance on the TNT now. Yeah, he's just doing so much damage with that Baby Dragon. Down to 7, 2, 
six. What? How did that baby dragon get that much damage out of pretty much nowhere? Essentially, a full HP now, and we're gonna see the graveyard being played here by TNT uh, with a defensive poison now we're seeing from Master Hong, but otherwise, it's gonna be pretty ineffective in terms of what Master Hong is literally trying to do, just trying to buy time, allowing for that one more golem push that should be enough to get that 726 on that HP on that right tire. So let's see if we can do it here. We're gonna see an offensive poison on the other end, Night Witch. I'm just gonna go down essentially, but the golem is now coming on to the right side now to see. Is gonna get anything from TNT now? Yeah, interesting that he decides to throw down that Night Witch where the golem's not gonna be. I guess he just thinks the golem will be able to do this on his own. Baby Dragon there played in the center. We see the golem moving across. If he pops in the middle of no man's land, the Golemites most likely will split up, one going right, one going left. Depends how they split. Beautiful tornado there. Good tornado. And this is the power of Ice Wizard. You match it with that tornado, and you just stop everything coming through. Look how well oh, it just stops Wizard. everything. The Ice Wizard is going to confirm that the defense isn't but the Mega Minion's still at it. And that one little baby dragon once again connects to the tower, and the tombstone is not going to be there in time. And that's going to be surely a finish now going towards the side. But as we do say, Poison is there in time, but the log will be able to finish it off. And HQ in and all of that, TNT finds himself at a loss in his debut. And Master Hong will be bringing HQ to another series victory.